Hey guys, what's up? My name is Thomas Spark. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be giving you an in-depth tutorial with NordVPN, covering pretty much every single feature there is out there to give you some idea of what kind of app it is. Maybe you've already bought it, um, or if not, you can use my link in the description and pin comment down below. This is an unsponsored tutorial, however, just because I thought people might want to know more about how to use NordVPN to its full capabilities. So thanks ahead of time. If you haven't decided to purchase it yet, and after this video, you might decide to do so. Or if you've already purchased Nord, consider checking out VPNTierlist.com and some of my other favorite products like Malwarebytes is a good one. I'll put that in the description down below and a few other of my recommended privacy products. Anyways, guys, let's get into this NordVPN tutorial. So guys, first up, we've logged into NordVPN already. Basically, the way it works when you first start it is you'll log in in a browser with your NordVPN account. Pretty simple, right? Next up, we have this map interface. You can actually click on these areas um, to select a specific server, which is cool. So you can actually connect to one of these servers just by clicking on it. Clicking on it will connect it right away. So when it's connecting, this is the period of time where your internet's gonna kind of go out and you're gonna be waiting to connect to the server. Once you do connect though, your IP address is gonna change and you're fully connected to the VPN. If you wanna disconnect, you could disconnect for five minutes, 15 or an hour, and it will auto reconnect after that, or you could disconnect permanently. We're gonna stay connected for now. I wanna go into the settings right now and show you some of these other features. This ability will launch it at startup. If you don't want NordVPN starting when your Windows computer starts up, go ahead and disable that. But you can also disable this if you want less notifications when NordVPN is currently running. And you can even turn off background processes so NordVPN will kind of go away when you want it to. But this could disable some things like app updates, the kill switch, and staying connected after closing the app. I'm gonna disable that for now. Auto connect features are cool because you can uh, pretty much make it start when Windows starts up and auto connect when it launches. So just to ensure you always wanna stay encrypted and private on the internet. You can even connect on unsecure Wi-Fi networks like on your laptop. For here, I like to pick Nord Links, which is NordVPN's kind of rebrand of the WireGuard protocol developed by Jason Donafield. It's an open source protocol that is pretty much the best one to use nowadays. It's really fast on mobile and PC connections, and it's definitely the one you want to use. So I do believe it defaults to that, but sometimes I like to just turn it off and pick Nord Links just to make sure. Auto Connect will also let you choose which server it connects to. Recommended server is probably fine for most people. Let's go back and look at some of these other options here. We have some specialty servers. Double VPN is going to kind of bounce your computer's traffic through two virtual tunnels. Probably unnecessary for a lot of people, but kind of a cool security thing if you're super paranoid. Onion over VPN is pretty much going to put the Tor network over VPN. So connect to VPN, then through Tor. Um, so that is a kind of a cool feature um, to check out. Basically, the idea with that is that your IP is anonymized before you access the Tor network. So interesting to do. P2P with NordVPN should theoretically allow you to do better P2P activity when downloading stuff. I've really noticed too much of a difference with that, but you might want to play around with it and see if you can get better speeds while torrenting while using the P2P option. This is going to be good for downloading torrents and stuff like that. Next up, we could take a look at MeshNet. And for this one, I actually made an in-depth video on it talking about some of the capabilities. You could pretty much use NordVPN remotely to kind of connect a external device. You could pretty much watch your Plex server, even if you're not home, and play around with other cool power features like that. If you guys are interested in learning more about MeshNet, go ahead and check out the video on my channel where I talk in depth about MeshNet. Just look on the Tom Spark Reviews YouTube channel videos, type in MeshNet when you're searching, and you should be able to find the one where I talk about more details. Also, what more people can do with MeshNet and how to use it with something like Plex. So make sure to check out that one. Moving on down the tab list here, we do have some other features you could take advantage of. Threat Protection Beta is pretty much an ad tracker and malware blocker. One thing I do kind of find interesting is that you can even uh, deep scan files for malware, which is interesting. Now we can also click on this section here, which is going to be MeshNet. Um, as I showed you, you could access it from the settings or by just going here. So that's an easy way to get access to it. 
if you click on this icon, it's pretty much going to give you a little tutorial for how to use NordVPN. Uh, for those people who are watching this video and want to try to run through the app themselves, this is a good thing to click on. However, if we go back to the settings, we can kind of go through more of the features. Now, the kill switch is going to be useful if you want to make sure you never leak your IP. Basically, what happens is if the VPN somehow has an error, it crashes or something like that, um, your internet will automatically be disabled on the computer. This is a network kill switch. It'll disable the internet all over your computer. The application kill switch will kill a sp specific application, whether your browser or a torn application or something like that. It's cool to see Nord offer both options. Split tunneling is an interesting feature where you can use VPN for certain things, maybe something like the torn application um, or a browser, or maybe not for video games. So you can depend on which one on, you kind of do without. So that's pretty cool. If we take a look at advanced, you could do custom DNS options. You can even set a custom DNS server with something uh, like a pie hole or ad blocking uh, servers like uh, Quadranet, I do believe, Cloudflare and stuff like that. We have obfuscated servers, which are going to be good if you are in a sensor country that blocks VPN use. We also have invisibility on LAN, which is going to make your device harder to detect on a local network. Um, so it won't be available to other people could be useful on public Wi-Fi or something like that. And we can even do a remote access while connected to VPN. Access this community remotely by using remote desktop apps, for example. So that is also pretty cool, a little bit similar to the MeshNet feature. We have the account settings here where you could look up information about when your subscription ends. You could add multi-factor authentication, change the password and get more information about the different devices that are supported. There's a refer friend program that gives your friend a free month and the dark web monitor is another feature um, which you can monitor your emails and make sure they are not detected. Anyways, guys, that's a pretty good rundown of NordVPN, pretty much discovering and showing you guys every single feature explained. Let me know down in the comments if that helped and click on my link in the description and check out some of my other recommended products if you like this video and I'll see you again very soon.